Hey everyone. So this is the third video in the ML.NET end-to-end series. And it's taken a good bit of time to get this going. And throughout the time I was kind of debating, first of all, I wanted to do this as kind of a web client where we can use our ML.NET model to make predictions. And I was kind of debating whether to do kind of a, a Vue, React, or Angular front-end application. The time I've been doing that debate, Jeff Fritz has been streaming quite a bit on Blazor, and that kind of inspired me to, to give it a try. And so that's what I want to do in this video is create a Blazor app, Blazor web application that makes the ML.NET predictions. So to get started, I'm in Visual Studio 2019 here, and I'm going to create a new project. And I'm going to do a Blazor app, and then uh, I'll click Next. And I'll give it a name. I'll just say ML.NET predictions. And here you have the option to do Blazor server app or WebAssembly app. The server app, I think you get in .NET Core 3, and that should now be released. And then the, the WebAssembly app is in .NET Core 3.1. But I'm going to do Blazor server app here. I'll leave everything as defaults and click Create. Now, if you never messed with Blazor before, I'm going to include a couple of links in the description, some videos where that I use to help me learn it, uh, some some interesting videos that show uh, some of the cool things about Blazor. All right, so real quick in our Solution Explorer, uh, we have our Pages folder here. And if you notice, most of these are .razor files, and that's because the Blazor uses Razor components. In the old days, well, not so old now, but ASP.NET MVC, what well, you can do Razor in markup, kind of like this. They ended in CSHTML. But now you can do .razor files here for Blazor components. And I'm going to go ahead and run this and show you what this looks like. There we go. So we've got this sample Blazor app here. It looks pretty cool. It, it does use Bootstrap. And it comes with a couple of samples here. Got the counter. You can click as many times there, and you got a fetch data one, which kind of stimulates how you can get data from a service. And you can tell this is fake data because it says 40 degrees is cool, 6 degrees is also cool, then 76 degrees is chilly. So I'm going to close that, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete these weather data files. I'm going to delete the counter and the fetch data. Just kind of start off from a more of a clean slate here. And so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to create another folder here. This is going to be models. And that's going to hold kind of the, the wine model that I'm going to use. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add another Razor component. That made this a little confusing here and it's tripped me up uh, several times. When you see dot razor, the first thing you want to click on is a razor page, but that's the old CSHTML page there. What you want to do is razor component. And so now we get this dot razor file here. Now I'll call one prediction. If you get this waiting for IntelliSense, try to close it and then reopen it. Now for razor components, we can have our markup and then our our code pretty much in the same file. Actually, let's start off with our data here and add another class. Uh, we call it prediction service. This is going to be the service that calls into the API that we did in our previous video. And I'm going to use the HTTP client in here. Call it a client. Create a constructor with it. So I can pass this in and then set my field equal to the parameter in the constructor. And then here I'm going to create a public async task float method called get one prediction. Then I'm going to pass in a model here that I mentioned earlier. I'm going to call it one model and name it model. And then here I'm just going to get the prediction and await 
client that post async instead of posting async uh, I can actually call a post JSON async so let's install a NuGet package it's gonna be a Microsoft that ASP.NET Core Blazor HTTP client and this is a pre-release item here so this just kind of merges system text and json with the http client so when we install this on our client we get a couple of extra json extension methods here so i use post json async it's going to return a float and then i'm going to call i'm just going to do that, that slash api slash model and then pass in our content is just the model from our parameter and if you notice we don't have a base address here so what we can do in our client we can set base address so we don't have to specify it in every call that we do and that's going to be a new URI and that's going to be what and I'll just put in what we have running locally and in fact I have that API project here let's run that so we have this address here and I can put that in as our base address and when we have the prediction let's go ahead and return the prediction there we go now let's create this one model model in our models folder and these are just going to be properties of the one data pretty much the same data that we use from our CSV data in our original video so the first thing is going to be the string of the one type and instead of typing all these uh, let me paste these in there we go so we have all of our items on our one model and then here we can bring in that namespace of our models and now we have our service so with all that done let's go back to our Razor component up at the top I'm going to do at page and give it slash one so what this says is the component is a page and I'm gonna give it the route of slash one so whenever we go to the slash one location in the address bar we'll go to this page here and a couple of using statements we'll use the data and then we're going to use the models and I'm going to do add inject prediction service and I'm going to call it underscore prediction service this will this will do dependency injection of this service so we can use it within our component here for this to actually work we need to go into our startup and then I'll remove this line here now do services dot add client and then I'm going to pass in the prediction service type into it so it knows to inject this service as an HTTP client All right, so back to our component here what I essentially want to do is create a form to capture all of the items that will eventually be passing into this model so the user can input everything into it but Blazor has a couple of useful components that they have built in and one of them is a form and it's called edit form and I can give it a model which is going to be one model and then down in our code I can create a new instance of it one model set it equal to a new instance of the class and now that should go away there we go and so for each item here I'm gonna create a paragraph and inside it's gonna be a label and the first item is the one type and then for all the input items blazer also has some components for that so I'll do input and this one I'll do input select and I can bind that value to a property in the model 
So that's going to be the type property I'll bound that to. So it says a select. Let me give it some options. I'll do first kind of a empty selection. I say select one type. Next one's going to be red, red one, and then white. Now put in the values here. There we go. And instead of y'all seeing me type all this out, I'm just going to copy everything over and then we'll continue. All right, so I got all the other items in here. So everything else is using the input number. And then last we the last thing we have to do is create a button and it's going to be type submit and I'm going to give it a couple of button classes, button and button primary. I'm going to call it predict. Good. If I click on this now, nothing's going to happen because the form doesn't know what to do once that submit button is clicked. So up here in the edit form, I can do on, on submit and put in a method reference here called predict one. And then down in our code, I can create a new protected async task method called predict one. Same thing that we put in up above in our on submit. Then in here, I can do var prediction equals await prediction service. And here is that method that we created, get one prediction, and then pass in the one model. And real quick before we run this to make sure everything looks okay, let's go to the shared folder here and to our nav menu. I'll remove this fetch data item. And for instead of a calendar, it's going to go to one, one prediction here. And I'll, I'll give it an icon of, I guess, a droplet kind of to, to indicate wine or a drink or something like that. So let's run this and see what we got so far. All right. So here is our item in the nav. And we go here and here's our form. Yeah, it doesn't look the best, but that's something we can tweak later. So actually let's go to our component and we can breakpoint in here as well. And let's do that. Uh, just put in some random stuff here. Call predict. So it calls this method and it's going to go into our get one prediction method. It's going to call that item and it gives us a prediction. So we know all of that works, but there's a little bit of a problem. We got a prediction, but now we need to display it on our screen for the user to see. So we'll close that and let's update our component here. And so let's see, so I can create a, another private variable, a float, call it one quality. I go to default value of zero and I'll do another one here a boolean has prediction set default to false and our predict one method here I'll set one quality to what we get and then I'll set has prediction to true then up in our markdown here or markup if there is a prediction show this div same prediction is one quality and I'm going to do another button so the users can go back to the form if they want to make another prediction that's going to be a type reset I'll say make another prediction and for regular buttons I can do an on click event handling here do a method called reset prediction. I'll go ahead and put that down here. It'll be a protected void reset prediction. 
and that all that's going to do is set has prediction to back to false. That's if we do have a prediction, it'll show this. Else, it's going to show this edit form here. All right, so let's run that and see how that works. There we go. So we get our edit form like usual because we don't have a prediction. We'll do some random values again. Got prediction. Now our edit form disappeared and it's showing this div that we had here and this button. So make another prediction and our edit form reappears. So as you can see, Blazor is pretty good at doing kind of a dynamic UI like you might see in stuff like Angular or React. So that's something that's interesting to keep in mind. But there's something else we can actually do on this edit form here. So what happens if I want to do negative numbers here, or if I don't make a selection here, it's still going to make me do a prediction, but we can stop the user from doing some, some bad data like that. Since it's using in the edit form and all these items are using this one model, we can actually set some attributes on here to kind of restrict the type of data that we want inside of our properties of this model. We want everything as required. Uh, every, everything needs to be filled in before we can uh, do anything. And so for each of these, we can put in that is required. And it's going to come from the data annotations namespace here. And we'll do the same for fixed ex exidity. Marking is required. But it's a float number. And so that's to help prevent give it some negative uh, numbers or zeros or something like that we can tell it that it has a range and it goes from one to double dot positive infinity and we can do that with all the other items here all right so we get those on all these other properties but how do we tell the user that they may have violated one of these requirements here so that's where blazer helps us out some more it has some components for data annotations validator and then it, it gives us a validation summary of all the items that would fail from these data annotations here so let's run this so we we'll go to our my prediction here we put in negative numbers in here so each time each one of these are, are going to fail it'll give us a summary on it and it says type is required and each time we fix these that error message goes away and then now we can give it the data it requires and make a prediction all right i think i will end things there i just wanted to show that we can use blazor to call the api that we use to make an ml.net prediction which you could probably can do as well as in this prediction service, you can call ML.NET directly, uh, load the model and then do prediction engine from there instead of doing an API to do that. But that's up to you. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see y'all next time. Thanks.